Welcome back to my Sling TSI build. It's been probably three weeks since I've done an update. Um, I've got a fair amount done. Um, as you can see here, I worked on the empennage, attaching the vertical and horizontal stabilizers, the rudder and the elevator. Um, those are uh, not particularly difficult to figure out, but the, <clears throat> the space confines make it a little harder than uh, just throwing some bolts and washers in there. And I'll talk about that more in a minute. The rudder, if you, you can't see in this video, but it, I've just got a couple of bolts just holding it in place. I did the wiring, got my beacon working. <clears throat> and then uh, I worked on the wings. Um, I've mentioned it in a couple of videos, um, but it may have been a while. Uh, my wings were in wing stands until just three weeks ago uh, because I've moved this project twice as I've uh, moved a couple of times. And I left the wings in the wing stand. I just thought that was easier to move them around rather than a rack. Uh, so I never built a rack. So anyway, wing stands are off. As you can see, I've got the push rod and the flap. That's more of a twist rod. Uh, I got the wing tips on, wired up the lights. Um, I, uh, I just have the aileron just sitting in place. I haven't, uh, I haven't, uh, installed the flap yet. It's over on my other workbench. That'll be next week's project. But I wanted to talk about, uh, the tight confines of, uh, the, the hinges for the elevator. Um, there's a few things I ended up using, which made it not, I mean, it still wasn't easy, but, um, I use this, which is a handy clamp. I got this from Aircraft Spruce. It's a little overpriced for what it is, as all specialty tools tend to be. Um, but I use this so you can put a nut in there and then crank it in, and you can kind of hold it in place while you position the bolt. And I this is just a pair of uh, sort of flat build vice grips, I put some tape around, um, just to kind of, this is a really small one. So I was able to kind of position the bolt and kind of push it through. And then this is another gadget I got on Aircraft Spruce. It comes in a four pack, so it has a bunch of different sizes, but you can put a washer in here and then you can kind of hold the washer in place while you push the, the bolt through. So, I don't know how I would have done it without this because the bolts, even in this, this is uh, this just barely holds it in place, which is what you want. Um, you need something thin and, you know, it'll release when you're ready easily. Um, but uh, I still drop nuts and bolts in here 500 times. And so I would recommend a search and rescue magnet. This is this is like uh, one I got on Amazon for $6.99. Um, this one is uh, bendy. It's like uh, you can bend it into shapes. It's really not what you need for this project, but it works great um, because it will go in here and grab your washers that you dropped. <laughs> um, I have this other, this is like a Harbor Freight one I've had for years, but the head is too big on this one. So if you've seen this $6 retrieval magnet, it's like a telescoping magnet um, on a stick. It, it doesn't fit in here. You need something. This is, you can see, this is much smaller. It just speeds it up. I would keep this right here. And as I dropped the, the, uh, the washers out of this thing or whatever, I would just, I could just pick them up, put it right back on and keep going. But uh, it, it's, uh, I, I think, I think rigging this took a couple of hours, um, but it's a pretty tedious couple of hours. The, uh, the outer ones went easier than the center one, and I think the center one wasn't aligned perfect for me, so I think that it just, it didn't just push through, the, the, the bolt didn't just push through, so it, it took a little more effort and um, power to kind of push it through. Um, and I did this one last, and of course, if I was going to do it again, I would do this one first and get that one through and then do the other ones. Um, 
but it's possible that that would have just made these other ones, um, you know, I'm still happy with the movement and all, so I think we're good. But um, I don't know if that's, somebody else would have the same issue, but that center nut or the center hinge was the hardest one. But anyway, so uh, the this I just set on here just to see how it fit. Um, I'm actually pretty happy with just, you know, it's been sitting in a box for two years and I just slid it on and without any anything, it's uh, it looks halfway decent. It's covered in dust, but um, you know, it's starting to look like a plane, uh, especially with the beacon, I should have turned it on. But uh, anyway, this is, uh, this is the updates for the last few weeks. Um, the, uh, the, uh, the wing tips take a little bit of time um, because you're installing, I can't remember, whatever this last rib is, rib 14 or whatever it is, and then the tip, and you're doing all this match drilling. And these back here are, um, I gotta put some super fill over these, but um, you kinda gotta figure out a good way. Um, I have one of those hole finders, but it's pretty tight, especially up here. Down here, you can get it in there for these couple. Um, and actually, I. I misdrilled. Um, I had laid some tape out and I just got, it just crinkled and I got off. So I got to cover that with some super fill. But anyway, um, this does take more time. I thought this would be a, a quick project and it actually, to do it right and take your time with it, it takes a little bit of time. Um, and then getting these positioned, these have um, three rib nuts you put in. And of course I epoxied them into place. Um, you know, getting them all positioned and trying to make sure they're, you know, aimed to the direction of the way the air is going to go. Um, the uh, the push rods, again, um, similar to the issue with the elevator, um, when you get up underneath here into the access um, hatch there, the little hole, you're completely, this one, you're completely blind when you're putting in this push rod into the little gadget. Um, it, it, you just, you can't see it. You have to have two hands up in there. And I don't know, unless y'all come up with a better way, it's just a tedious kind of process that it was a little frustrating. And I spent a lot of time and dropped uh, washers many, many, many times trying to get that to work. Um, the, uh, the one out here is uh, much, much, much easier. I don't know why. It's just a, it's a different kind of like uh, hinge contraption. The the way it twists is just easy to get to, and it was no big deal at all. It took five minutes. Um, so anyway, uh, also torquing these um, is, a, is a little bit of a process too because I can't get a socket in there. And that's, I have a socket-based, I have two socket-based torque wrenches. So uh, I got an extension I'll show you these. Um, so these are for like hard to get to places. So it just gives you an extension uh, that then you can then put your torque wrench in. So I was able to get it up in there and use my torque wrenches. So um, people who are long-term mechanics probably have a better way to figure that out, but that's what I did um, to get up in here. But, and you can't really see, but um, the, uh, they're all on the elevator. They're all in and torqued and, and everything. So that's, uh, that's pretty much it for, for this update. Uh, hope everybody's build is going well and you're having fun and uh, you're not having to develop your patience too much. Uh, and uh, I'll check in next time.